matchless name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm happy that we are together once again on the second day of this uh, great celebration in the presence of God. We have come into the presence of a God who has something new every day. His mercies are new every day. There's no refrigerator, microwave in heaven. Every day he gives new manna. That is why he said, asked us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. So we need to receive every day something from God. Let us be ready. Let's be prayerful and thankful because God is in our midst. I'm so happy and excited to be in the Himalayan Bible College and Seminary. I, th I thank God for this institution. I thank God for the vision and the leadership that is there. And thank, thank God for Pastor Sam and his family. I thank God for the faculty members who are there. I thank God for every student who is attending the last uh, couple of years. I thank God for all the parents who have been willing to send the students. I also want to thank God for the pastors who come from nearby places. God bless everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's be glad and rejoice. God makes every day special. No two days are same. No two people are same. No two meetings are same. Even if you listen to the same Bible topic, you will know that it's going to be different. So today, God is going to touch each one of us. And God is going to speak to our heart and transform and bless us. Yesterday we were listening to the call of God in the morning and in the evening we were also listening to the power of God and the working of the Holy Spirit. This morning we will listen to two topics, in the first session one special topic and the, after that the second session also a very very interesting topic. And uh, I want to begin the first session by, you know, we usually have a desert salad before a main meal and the desert after the meal. So one small salad and then we will go into the main meal. Let's read from 1 John chapter 1 verse 1, 2 and 3. 1 John chapter 1 verse 1, 2 and 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. That which was from the beginning. The word that was from the beginning, which we have heard. And which we have seen. Which we have seen. With our eyes. With our eyes. And which we have looked up, and uh, our hands, are, you know, which we have looked, and our hands, no, next, okay. and, and touched with our hands, yes. touched, you have some other translation, can you read that for me, what was from the beginning, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have seen, with our eyes, with our eyes, what we have looked, we, what we have looked, and touched with our hands. The These are the concerning the word of life. of life. These are the three, four special experiences that a child of God has with the word of life. The first one is to hear the word. The first experience that you have in our life is to hear our word, hear the word of God. To hear the word of God, you don't really need to be in this room. You can be in the next room. You can be in the office. I was sitting and listening to the worship in, the, in my room, which is next door. So you don't really need to be here to listen to hear something. That's the first experience. 90% of the people are people who hear the word of God. They don't move from that experience. Most of the churches, people come on Sunday and they hear the word of God. Hearing the word of God is only the initial experience in a Christian life. That's what it says, which was in the beginning, which we have heard. What is the second experience? What is the second experience? See in the word of God. So this morning, all of you should start learning to see the word of God. You know how to hear the word of God. You've been hearing the word of God. Now you should start visualizing the word of God. How do you start visualizing and seeing the word of God? When God speaks to you, that you are the head and not the tail, start seeing that you are the head. God speaks to you, a door is going to be open. Start visualizing that the door is going to be open. Start seeing the Red Sea is going to be split. Start seeing the miracle that you are expecting. 
Start seeing the promises that is there in the word of God. Hearing the word is the first experience. Second one is seeing the word of God. What is the third experience? We go slowly. First is hearing. No. First is hearing. Second is seeing. Third is looked into. What is the difference between seeing and looking into? People sitting there can see me. But people sitting in the front row and I can see them better. I can look into their eyes. I can look into their face. There I can't look. It's only seeing a general picture. I have an idea that they are there. But when you are closer to me, I can look right into your face. That is looking at Jesus. Looking at Jesus has different stages. As you get closer and closer and closer, you will start seeing and seeing and seeing more clearly Jesus in your life. So this morning, right from the beginning, let me tell you, start moving closer to God that you will have a clear vision about whom you are following. Hallelujah. 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 You have been hearing the word of God. You have been listening very carefully. But God wants you to move to the next level of seeing the word of God and looking into the eyes of Jesus. That is why it says in Hebrews, fix your eyes on Jesus. You have to look carefully at the word of God. Word of God, the Bible is not studied or read like newspaper. It is meditated on. Every word you must read and spend time over it. Reread, reread, reread till the word starts speaking to you. Till the word jumps out from the hook into your heart. You must continue to meditate on the word of God. And that is what is seeing and looking. Now the final or the greatest experience which very few believers have is the one which I want to tell today. What is the next experience? Touching with your hand. Woo! What an experience to touch the word of God with your hand. When Jesus was on the earth, there was a lady with a blood issue. Many people saw Jesus in the crowd. Some people jammed him around. The disciples were close to him and seeing him. Some were looking at him as he was preaching and sharing. But this lady went slowly from behind and touched the garment of Jesus. As she touched the garment of Jesus, the power flowed into her body. When you touch the word, that is the time when you really receive the power. Why are you not receiving the power? You are praying, you are worshipping, you are listening, you are looking. You are right here, but you haven't done the great thing that you need to do. Stretch your hand and touch Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you, God wants to touch you. God wants to hug you. God wants to hold you. God wants to lead you in your life. You need to be really excited to get that close. If I want to touch anyone sitting here, can I touch any of them? No, they are so far. So if I, they need to touch or you need to touch me, you need to come closer. Much closer than seeing and looking. That is why people are unable to touch Jesus because they are only at the visual distance. Not hearing distance, not seeing distance, but a close proximity with Jesus where you are able to touch him personally. Hallelujah. 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 Draw close to him. Come close to him. Leave everything behind and get so close that you can touch him. God wants to give you different, different experiences in your spiritual life. I want to show something very uh, interesting before I come to the main subject. I want one of Philip's children, any, any one of them to come forward. Philip, your son, can you send one of them here? Yes. Anyone? What's his name? Yes. Joyce. John, come, come. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Good morning. Your name again? Joyce. Joyce. Now, we're going to have, this is my friend Philip's son. I'm going to have a small demonstration. He's very close to me. I can touch him, right? This is, this is touching. Yeah, have you seen the mothers holding and hugging and uh, turning around and looking at the face and 
Every day they take the baby and hug and kiss and they've seen, but they still want to have a touch and feel. That's how God wants to hold you, touch you, keep you close. You are saying so far, you need to be very close to him. That is a very close spiritual experience. Now I'm going to give you a demonstration, okay? Now he's going to do something for me. Hold my hand. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Don't leave. Hold it very carefully. Yeah? You must see. Hold it tightly. Don't leave. Now hold it with both hands. Tightly. Yeah? Don't leave. You have to hold it tightly. Don't leave at all. He's, he's, he's really doing well. I've done this many times. He's done really well. But I'm going to see, show you something else. Now, I'm holding his hand. You take it away. <laughs> See, what am I trying to say? Don't try to hold God. You can touch him. You can go near him. But allow God to hold you. There is a big difference between you holding God and God holding your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us are trying to hold God. You cannot. You can touch him, you can be near him, but just allow him to hold you, like how I am holding him. When God holds you, that grip is meaningful. That hand is strong, that is everlasting, that is able to take you through situation. It will never fall. When my children were small, I used to hold their hands. I have two girls and I used to go for walking in the evening. And as some dirty water came, I would just lift my hands up. And suddenly they will go over the thing. One day I was going over the railway station and there was a staircase. One little girl, the younger one, slipped. She was going to go down the track onto the, onto the train. And some people were looking. All I needed was my hand. And I just pulled it up. She was on the next step. She slipped, but she didn't fall. Why? Because her hand was held by my hand. Allow God to hold your hand. And if God holds your hand, you will fly over the pit. You will not fall. He will take you across to the next level. Allow God to hold you. Allow God to hold you and never to leave you. Because He is able to take you to the next level. Hallelujah. 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 One more interesting thing on this is, this is just the introduction. We are coming to the main point. I am sitting here and holding. How much can I lift him? To my height. When God's hand comes down from heaven and holds you, when he lifts you up, you will be above all the mountains. Amen. You will be above all difficulties because his hand is from high. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's give a big clap. <laughs> Allow God to hold you, hold your hand and lift you up in life. Allow God to control your life. Don't try to manipulate God. But allow God to direct your life. This is very important in spiritual life. As leaders, as pastors, as ministers, you must allow God to direct your life. You must allow God to control your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is just my introduction. I'm coming to the subject. How many of you are excited? Because this subject takes about three hours. I will concise it into one and a half hours. And maybe one hour and then we'll take the next subject quickly. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. Quickly please. For all the promises yes. of God yes. in him yes. are yes. And all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, and in him are Amen. All the promises of God are in him are yes. This book has lots of promises of God. The Bible has lots of promises of God. And they are all yes and amen. God will not say no. When you ask God's promise, He is not going to say no. You pray according to the promise of God, He will not say no. All the promises of God are yes and amen. You know there are a large number of promises to feed on. Today pastor asked who all had breakfast. I saw all the hands going up. But who all had ate one promise this morning? We forget to eat promises every day. We have to learn to eat the promises and the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by God's word. Learning to eat from the promise of God. 
There has been lots of promises for you in 2017, packed with your name and kept written. Himachal Bible School, second year, name written very clearly, packed and kept. But you didn't receive it, it's lying there. All the promises are yes, but you have to say amen to it. When do you get the promise? When you say amen to it. All the promises of God are yes, but when you say amen to it, you will receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After my MS general surgery, how I got into MBBS is a wonderful testimony. My parents never came with me. I had finished plus two, 14 year old, 16 year old boy. My father said go to Ludhiana and I wanted to go to Ludhiana because I wanted to study in CMC. And uh, I got into a Kerala Express, I still remember. My father said the train superintendent is my friend, go and meet him. So I got him from card party after the CMC went on examination and interview. And went and met this train superintendent, he said the train is very full, but go and sit. He took me to the canteen area, made me sit somewhere. And the night, till night he didn't come. Night he came back and said, very sorry, no more birth. But he gave me a birth to the savala and potato that was lying there next to the sack. One wooden place where I could just squeeze myself in. And that's how I reached Delhi. And then I went from there to Ludhiana. There was nobody with me. All the other students came with three, four people, bag, baggages. Here I am alone. Where is my father and mother? They are missionaries. They didn't come for me for my school admission. They did not come with me for my plus two admission. They did not come with me for my MBBS admission. They never came for my graduation. They had no time for me. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, don't worry, I'm not crying. <laughs> because parents didn't come, you don't have to cry. I was there all alone, but I was never alone because the army of God with me, the angels were with me. The same month, same week I gave the testimony in the CNI church because I thought in case I don't get an admission, I'm going to go away. So during the ragging, I was known as the testimony. They even cut, uh, teased me for many reasons. There was only one or two seats in the open quota. It was impossible for me to get in. But I knew my God was alive. I knew my Jesus is alive. He is a God of impossibility. And I got into MBBS admission in CMC Ludhiana in 1979. The same Jesus is alive for you. After my MBBS, I did my MS. In MS surgery, no Malayalis went in. It was all Sardarji was the main person. Dr. C.M. Singh and Dr. Diodar, no Malayalis, all the Malayalis went into uh, medicine department, Dr. Mary Matthews was the head of the department. So when I came in, they were very worried, how is this going to come? And they, it's very not easy to survive in, in surgery department. They take 10 people and select only 3, of which 1 or 2 will be having sponsorship. I didn't have a sponsorship, so I didn't know how I will get. It was very, very difficult, like Elijah in the famine. Only few ravens came in between and gave me some food. Maybe one or two, three days I would have no food. I will be running around. I have fainted in the blood, blood bag. I have collapsed in the theater. I had no time to even sit. No time. I had my toothbrush and paste in the ward. I would brush my teeth, run around doing all the work. Somehow praising God, struggling, 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 struggling. But finally when it came, the same Sardarji, CM Singh and the department decided to give me the seat. You know why? There were many reasons. Whenever he came in the night or evening, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, the Holy Spirit will guide me and I would be there. So he'll think 24-7 I'm sitting there. <laughs> Whenever the department chief was there, I was there. As he leaves the house, I will be leaving my room. And I will be sitting and doing, oh, you are here, you have not gone? <laughs> I will just smile and sit there. Oh, very, very good, very good. And one day I didn't go for rounds and he is taking rounds and the Sardarmi patient, Punjabi lady asked, where is Jesus Christ? He said, he said, Jesus Christ? There's no Jesus Christ. No, there's Jesus Christ who comes with you. That specs fellow. Oh, then he realized it was me. That big tall fellow. Yeah, and then she asked, why Jesus Christ? He said, she said, you know when he comes into the room, there is a different feeling. When he touches the wound, there is no pain. I like that boy to come and do my dressing. One after the other, patients started telling testimonies. I had no idea what was happening with my life. I was very, very young, but I knew I wanted to live for Jesus. 
All I know is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love him so much because he is my everything. He is the creator. He is the savior. He is my friend. I don't look at a second friend other than Jesus Christ. Jesus is everything for me. Even when I was a boy, Jesus was everything. When I got married, Jesus is my everything. Even when I have a hospital and I'm an academic chair doing everything, but Jesus is my everything. Even today morning, I like the beautiful hills, but I like the creator who made the hills. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My eyes is never folk, uh, taken away from him. My eyes is fixed on him. One day CM Singh was going to do a liver abscess. I prepared the patient in the theater and I was waiting. Suddenly this man comes in, goes like that and stands in the assistant side. I didn't know why he's standing there. He said, George, go home. You are going to do the surgery. Amazing. I couldn't believe. I just started my surgical career. He started teaching me. When the time came, he said, you are going to be selected. And when the admission came, I was the one who got into MS surgery. It was God's way of opening my life. After my MS surgery, I in fact wanted to come to Manali. But God said, no, wait some more time. A hydrocephalic baby, healed by God. God had different plans. I wanted to come and work in Himachal. I had talked to Dr. Laji, who was in Himachal Lady Willington Hospital. I visited Lady Willington Hospital eight times during my medical school days. I never used to go home for vacation because my parents were never there. They were ministering. So there's no point in going home. So I would visit some mission hospital and work with them. But then God said, no, some other plans I have for you. Then I wanted to do neurosurgery. God gave me an opening in Dr. Segal Nursing Home in Delhi. So I am working with Dr. Segal and I passed All India Institute. That is why I took this testimony. I looked at the All India Institute and said, Lord, give me an admission there. Can you imagine sitting in the bus and saying, Lord, give me an admission there. And I said, Psalm 37 says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Jesus, you know, you are my delight. I have no second delight. We know each other, how our relationship. So no in-between business. I don't need any mediation. You know I delight in you. You give me an admission. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His promises are yes and amen. If it says delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, it is amen. I took leave and took an took a appointment for Dr. Banerjee who was the head of the department. I went and met him. And I said, sir, I want to work with you. I am from CMC Ludhiana. I passed my MS. I am a good student. I love neurosurgery. He said, you can't work like that. All the institute is the number one institution. You have to write the examination. You can't walk from the street and say, I want admission. You are not military sponsored. You are not government sponsored. You just can't come and say, I need admission. I said, sir, I want to work with you. I'm so happy. I know the institution is very good. I know you are a good sir. I want to learn neurosurgery. I start, started telling him so many things. He was getting angry. He was getting upset. He was getting worried. Finally, I thought he was about to kick me out of the office. <laughs> So I said, sir, can I please leave my biodata with the secretary? He said, yeah, he will go. I kept the biodata with the secretary, came back to Segal Nursing Home. They said, what happened? How was the interview? Oh, he asked me to leave the biodata with the secretary. How my faith works? I see things before it happens. He said, leave and go. But I said, leave and come. <laughs> and that's how the thinking difference. In a man with faith, he sees always positive things, not negative things. Magnify the Lord, not magnify the problems. We magnify the problem. God says magnify the Lord. Put your magnifying glass on God, not on your problems, not on your issues, not on your personal life. Back magnify the God. Five days later, I get a phone call saying, come to Baraji's office. I took a half day and I ran. Sir, did you call me? Yes. Do you want a job? I said, yes. I'm excited. I can see, see my hair is going up even today. <laughs> he said, do you want to join today? I said, today I'll join. I'm so excited. Government job, all in the institute. I'm getting a job. My God is a prayer answering God. He can do amazing things. He gave an application, joining form letter. I signed. It took me two hours to get all the papers filled and signed. Because a very serious job as a non-PG resident in all the institute. And I am so happy and so excited. I have a fantastic habit that is telling testimony. <laughs> so I went to the canteen. 
I took a cup of coffee. I'm waiting for whom shall I say the testimony? From my younger days, this is my habit. Every day, two people have to say testimony. Otherwise, I will get breathing difficulty. My nights, I can't sleep. Somehow, I have to tell my testimony. A very, very big problem for me. Anything happens in my life, testimony. That's why I put it in YouTube. All testimony. I want the whole world to know my testimony. I want to know Jesus is alive. Yes. He's a wonderful God. So I will never be silent. So one person comes and sits opposite. I said, hi, I am Dr. George Gobur. Do you know I got into neurosurgery department today? I don't know whether he's a patient or uh, who this fellow is looking at me. He said, ha, ha, ha. I am Dr. So and so. I resigned from the department yesterday. <laughs> it was in his seat that I got admission. I said, thank you so much. Big God bless you. You want parotta, masala, dosha? What you want? inside, I don't know what to do, to hug him or hug God, whom should I hug? <laughs> My God is alive. My Jesus is alive. Amen. His promises are yes and amen. 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 I love my Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He talked for a long time. As he left, he said, George Kovu, I'm leaving to England. God gave him a job to England to give me a job in that place. But this is CMC well-known application. Getting the time is over for MCH. But if you send it immediately by speed post, three days later you can send it. It will reach there in time. You may get a job there. Can you believe? I got my MCH neurosurgery admission in that application. I didn't buy the application. I didn't even know that the time was getting over. But my father in heaven... Who knows my life? Who controls my life? Made somebody else buy the application. Made him come and sit in front of me and have a cup of coffee. And give this application and said, send it by speed post. Your destiny is there. Hallelujah. 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 My Jesus is alive. Yes. And his promises are yes and amen and amen and amen. He never changes. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even if your mother forsake you, I will not forsake you. Heavenly Father will never leave you. My God will never leave you. So let's come back to the, uh, to the topic today. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. Galatians 3 verse 16 to 18. Now to Abraham, oh. God gave the promises in the beginning to Abraham. Yes. He does not say seeds, but he says seed as of one. So all the promises that were given to Abraham was given to his seed. That is the message in the morning. And who is the seed? Go forward. And to your seed, who is Christ? So the seed is Christ. All the promises of Abraham was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. We think all the promises was Abraham was directly made for the Israelites. Yes. But it was mainly for fulfilling in Jesus Christ. The seed. Okay. Now you realize all the promises in the Bible from the beginning from Abraham. It was to the seed who was Jesus Christ. Now what is the next one? And this I say. And this I say. That the law. Now. Which was 430 years later. Yes. Cannot annul the covenant. 430 years later the law came. But the covenant that was before is far stronger and the promises that is remaining is very powerful. I want you to go and read because of lack of time. Let me jump to verse 22. Verse 22. But the scripture has confirmed no. all under sin no. that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So now the promise in the seed of Jesus Christ will come to whom? Those who believe. All the promises from Abraham was given to the seed Jesus Christ, not seeds, and that is coming to me. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting that God's promises that is in the Bible are all yes and amen, and it was not just meant for the Israelites, it was for 
his son Jesus in seed and in Christ it became complete. And when I believe in Christ, it comes to me. You are the owner of God's promises this morning. You are the participants of God's promises this morning. You are the heirs of God's past promises this morning. I want you to experience that great experience of receiving the promises. He promised to Abraham, I will give you a land. And God gave him the land. He promised to Abraham, count the stars, Abraham couldn't count. Count the sand, Abraham couldn't count. He was teaching some arithmetic to Abraham. And he said, if you can't count the stars and cannot count the sand, you will not count the number of descendants you can go to have. Abraham was wondering, I don't even have one. Sarah decided to help God a little bit. Confusion creation. Don't try to help God, please. Don't try to manipulate God. Leave everything to God. You don't need, God doesn't need any help from your side. God wants you to surrender your life and tune your life and fine tune your life to the purposes of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all the promises that was given to Abraham is fulfilled in Christ and it is for me. Romans 15, 8 to 9. 8 and 9. Romans 15, 8 and 9. Now I say, say that Jesus Christ yes. has been coming, coming a servant yes. to circumcision for the truth of God yes. to confirm the promises yes. made to the fathers. Yes! Jesus Christ has come to confirm the promises that were made to the fathers. All the promises that were made to the fathers in the Old Testament got confirmed in Jesus Christ and it is for me. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 to 19. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 to 19. Then you do not become this. Yes. Place, yes. But imitate those who through faith oh. and presence inherit the promises. Yeah, imitate the people who through patience inherit the promises. You need to have patience to inherit the promises. I know my life is not over. Yesterday we read Philippians chapter 1 verse 20, right? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Do you know what the next two verses says? I told my wife for me to die, live is Christ, to die is gain. So I'm waiting to die. She said, I am praying that you will live longer. <laughs> because you, our children, we need you in the family. If you have Philippians 1 in your page, you can keep a finger on this and that. Quickly see, what does it say after 20, the next one, next two verses? For when God made a promise. Uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 20 onwards. According to my earnest, uh, assumptions and hope that in nothing, I shall be a sin. But no, Philippians, yesterday we read. For to me. Uh, for to me. To live in Christ. Yes. And to die in gain. Uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on in flesh. If I live on in flesh. This, will be, this, mean, this means. Truth from my labor. Yes. If what I said truth I cannot tell. Yes. For I am a hard pressed. I am hard pressed. And between the two. Yes. Having a desire to depart. I want to depart immediately. I am hard pressed. I am going ready. My booking is ready. My flight is going to take. I want to go to heaven. I am hard pressed. But why am I staying back? Next verse. And be with Christ. Yes. Which is far better. Yes. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. To remain in flesh. To remain in flesh. Why am I here in 2018 remaining in flesh? And more needful for you. Because I wanted to come to Himachal and see you. Hello. I remain in flesh so that I can be of use to some people. Otherwise it's better for me to take off. Hallelujah. 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 When I was your age, if I had heard this message, I would have said, wait, wait, I want to live some more. But at this age, this verse is very exciting for me. Because after a certain age, your mind is all in heaven. Because you know you are going there. You are excited about it. Your promises are there. You have to patiently wait for your promises. Till you get everything one by one. Don't jump. 
Don't jump ahead of time. God has a particular time. The pupa becoming butterfly, there is a time. If you cut the pupa and open it, the butterfly will not fly. It will be a sluggish worm which will die. So don't cut, cut open. Wait, wait, wait. Don't push the children. Wait till the children mature. Nowadays the parents are pushing the children that they die, crush. Do, 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 do. Don't give the time for them to do. Let them do it. Allow them to do it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. All the Old Testament believers died in faith, not having received the promises. But, but having seen them, yes, they were just assuming and seeing. Abraham was waiting to see the city built by God. He was watching every morning. I am very close to that city now. I know that city is already built. I know I have a home in heaven. In John 6, God says, let not your heart be troubled. I am going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house there are mansions. And I'll come back and take you there. How many of you have your house already there? My house is ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a promise that you have a mansion. So many promises in the word of God. It is so exciting. Verse 39. Verse 39. And all this, oh. having obtained yes. good testimony, good testimony through, faith. through faith, all these big list of faithful servants of God obtained a good testimony by faith and did not receive the promise. Did not receive the promise. Who? It had waited for Jesus. You must understand all the biblical promises. Only the Old Testament fathers could see it. Couldn't experience it. We are the ones who are experiencing it. Through the, by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus. We are receiving the promises of God. We are actually in the promised land. He has seated us in heaven. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you think you are, you are sitting in heaven? No, no. Not even a single person. You are waiting to go to heaven. The Bible says you are seated up. With him in heavenly places. You must go back and read Ephesians. Very clearly says he has seated you. What is the kingdom of God? It's not eating and drinking. What is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness. Peace. And the joy of the Holy Spirit. When you sit with Jesus. When you are in heavenly places. Even the body. Your body is here. My body is here. But I am seated in the heavenly places. When I am seated in the heavenly places. I have righteousness, peace and joy. Some people, their body, soul and mind, everything is here. You can see their face. Their face is like... All worries and sorrows and problems and issues and... How will I live tomorrow? What will happen to my children? How marriage will happen? So many things. I never had any issue. All the issues are with God. If He doesn't know how to look after me, why should I live? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't carry unnecessary burdens. Leave it to Jesus. He is able to carry you and your burden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You eat on the promises of God. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5 verse 11. First John chapter 5 verse 11. What is the promise of God? And this is the testimony. Yes. That God has given us yes. eternal life. Eternal life is the first promise that we can take. God has given us the eternal life. Chapter 2 verse 25. And this is the promise yes. that he has promised us yes. eternal life. Eternal life is a promise. We must be really glad to receive the eternal life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when does the eternal life begin? Not when you die. Your eternal life has begun. You must change your understanding. People think eternal life begins after your death. Eternal life is begun now. That is why the joy of, joy of the Holy Spirit is in your heart. That is why the peace is in your heart. Many people are waiting to, after the death to get peace. Have all the worries now. I will have peace after death. So they are waiting. No, 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 no. God has given you eternal life now. Receive it. Your eternal life has already begun.
weakened. Only thing is you will leave the body, you will change. Praise Allah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My life on earth is part of eternal life. Today I am in Himachal, tomorrow I am in Trishur. My wife usually asks me where are you going to be in day after, I don't know. So she is always keeping one box ready. I may be in Trishur or I may be somewhere else. She will tell me, can't you tell what your plans are? I said, I don't know what my plans are. Only God knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were having church service in Trishur. A friend, great friend of mine came from Hyderabad and he attended three months. He said, exciting church, very nice church, but one big confusion. None of us know what is going to happen. Doctor, you are a very busy man. You tell me some things the previous Saturday. I will print out and come with the order of service and give it the next day. So that everyone knows what is going to happen. I said, brother, it's been eight years or ten years now we are running this church. I myself don't know what is going to happen. <laughs> it is only the Holy Spirit knows. Even when I came today, I don't know what is going to happen. Anything can happen anytime because we are sitting in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit can take control of your life and empower you. I can stop preaching. I was in Bhuvaneshwar and our first service was with the Telugu church. And the pastor's son was giving translating into Telugu. Suddenly he falls on the chair and he is fully in spirit and not translating. I didn't know that. Immediately a uh, pastor came and translated. Today I came, I thought there is going to be translation. Pastor said no translation because pastor knew I had three papers to finish. <laughs> he didn't even see. So he realized translation is going to take time so let us go quickly. How God knew that I had to finish this and move to the next one. Because I really don't know whether I'll come back to Himachal and see you again. But God wants you to know all His promises are yes and amen. And He wants to fulfill that in your life. Leave it to God to control your life. Leave it to Holy Spirit to take control of your mind and spirit. Your heart should be led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 I'm excited. I don't know whether you are excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Colossians chapter, uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Now to Abraham yes. and his seed, yes. when the promise is made. So to Abraham and his seed, the promise was made. It does not say. It does not say. And to seeds. To seeds. As I'm as repeating as this great mystery. I want you to learn this in this session. It does not say the seeds, but. As of many. Of many, but as of one, as of one, and to your seed, and to your seed, who is Christ? Who is Christ? So it is the promise that is there to the seed, which is Christ. Verse seventeen and eighteen. And this I say, yes, that the law which was four hundred and thirty years later, yes, cannot annul the covenant, yes, that was confirmed before God, yes, in Jesus. In yes. Law no cannot make the promise of no effect. For if, for if the inheritance of the law, yes, it is no longer a promise. Yes. But God gave to Abraham yes. by promise. God gave everything to Abraham by promise. Now you must understand. Let me tell you something about the law. In the garden, there was only one law. How many law God gave? Man could not keep one law. Can you imagine? He gave only one law. How did, it, how did man get ten commandments? The people, the Israelites asked for it. They said, you tell us whatever you say, we will do. So then they asked and demanded and got the law. What a big mistake. They demanded of God to give them the law. They got it, they grabbed it from him. The law is a schoolmaster. Which tells you what is right and wrong. Now since I told you this much. Let me tell you. Why did God say don't eat the tree of good and knowledge of good and evil. Any idea? Anybody ever thought of it? Adam and Eve thought. It is because God wanted to deny something very nice. The devil came and said. See, see, see. God has told you not to eat the tree of life. Tree, uh, no, you can eat the tree of life. But you can't eat the tree of knowledge. He is denying something. What is he denying? If you eat, you will become like God. 
they were already like God. So devil is putting a deceit, a lie, saying you will become like God. They were already like God. God created light in the image of him. So the devil is cheating them by putting the negative thought and making them think that is denied. Sex education came into the school by the devil. Because age standard student doesn't need to know anything about it. After marriage only you need to know. Pornography came into the internet by the devil. What you need to know? You need to know only when you need to know. Do you need to know how to operate the brain? No need. You are not a neurosurgeon. So why do you need to study neurosurgery? Only the person who needs to... Do you ever learn to drive a, fly, a plane? No, you just get into the plane and believe that pilot knows how to drive. You don't need to know everything in the world. But what you need to know, you need to know. So don't have to tell everything. But what you need to know, you need to know. So the devil wanted to cheat them. And why did God say don't eat the tree of knowledge? God did not want Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve to know that evil was existing. That Satan was there. Satan wanted to enter into their life by revealing himself as a devil, as a serpent. God wanted them to remain only in the goodness, in the innocence of man. Do you understand? The children are born innocent. They don't know anything that is evil. But as they go to college, when they learn all the innocence, of their innocence goes. They learn the evil. See, when I put my youngest girl to BDS, in Mangalore, I was taking an angel from my house. She had never heard a bad word. She has never spoken a bad word. We have no fight at home. We don't speak anything evil. She sees only good things. She has never seen anything bad. So I was very worried. I thought it can damage her whole life. She's now going to be exposed into the dirty world. And I'm sitting and praying and I'm staying in the lodge room. She didn't go with her mother to buy all the beddings and apron and all. She sat with me. She said, Papa, don't worry. I know you are worried about leaving me here. But God will take care of me. So where she was, God has protected her. Innocence is lost when you come to know the evil. Keep away from evil. Don't, the evil, don't try to understand the devil. Don't try to understand the negativity. Go, don't look into the things which you don't need to know. Be, read and study the word. Understand God. Understand the promises of God. And receive it. Have you understood now why Jesus God said, Don't eat from the tree of knowledge of the good and evil. He didn't want them to know that evil existed. It is the devil who wants to promote evil. And he promotes it through entertainment to music. Music is the only thing that came down from heaven. Rest everything was made here. So the devil promotes it by music. That is why I, see, I teach everyone, don't listen to the wrong music. Why do we have worship before the service? Because music, the real worship, brings down heaven. You know why? Now I'll tell you the reason. Angels are created for music, for worship. If I keep some honey outside, what gets attracted to the honey? Fly, honeybees, because they love it. So when worship is started, who gets attracted? Angels. So you want to bring angels down to your life? Start worshipping God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand why I say praise the Lord all the time? You are getting angels and heaven come down in your life. You are having heavenly experience in your bedroom. When you get up in the morning and praise God, angels are coming. Instead of putting nonsense on the TV and wrong music in your iPhone, or whatever mobile you have. Listen to the music of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do your ears for God. His promises are yes and amen. Don't worry about the laws. Do's and don'ts. Don't touch. Don't do this. No. Worry about God. Think about God. Remain in God's presence. Romans chapter 4 verse 13. Romans chapter 4 verse 13. Yes. He would be the heir of the world. Yes. Was not to Abraham. Yes. Are to receive. Yes. Through the law. Yes. But through the righteousness of faith. Through the righteousness of faith, the promise becomes yours. When you believe it is yours, by faith it becomes yours. 
Law could not deliver the promise. Law could not transfer the promise. But faith could transfer the promise. How do you get the electronic transfer done? By faith. How does the promise that is in heaven come into your hand? By faith. Can you imagine? Now I can send some money to America in two seconds. I go to the bank and say electronic transfer, some special number, some code, tuck, 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 and the name of the person in America and the bank. Next second I call, hello, did you get? Yes, yes, we got the money. Imagine the promise in heaven already to be that. The, the code word is faith and believe and say amen. Did you? <laughs> it is in your hand. It is no more in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You receive it by faith in Jesus. How many of you are excited that you are going to receive all your promises? Just by believing it. Just by believing it. Just by believing it. You will receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can see mighty men of God sitting here. I can see great women of the ladies of God who are going to prophesy. Who are going to bring down heaven. Who is going to do miracles. Who are going to be walking in power and fire. These are the last days. And Elijah and Elijah are going to be born. And great miracles are going to happen in your life. Believe that the promises are existing for you. Now I am going to come to the secret of this promise. The biggest secret. These are two, three messages but I am mixing them up quickly to deliver it before time. That is Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. That's the secret. <laughs> What is the thing? The words of the amen. The words of the amen. The faithful and true witness. The faithful and true witness. So who is this words of amen? Jesus Christ. So who is amen? Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ comes into your heart, who is amen? You are amen. Who is who is amen in heaven? Jesus Christ. Who is Amen in heaven? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Do you know in Malayalam the word Amen, I don't know whether in Hindi, is the person who brings the order from the judge to the house where it is going to be given. His name is called Amen. He gets the order from the judge and he delivers it into the hand of the person. His name is what? Amen, amen in Malayalam. I don't know in Hindi whether you have the same Amen. So his name is Amen. He's called the quote Amen. So we are heaven's Amen. That means when we say Amen to something, it happens in heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is Amen of heaven. And that Amen comes into me. And all the promises are yes. And I say Amen. It comes to me. Yes and Amen. This has to be combined. What has to be combined? Yes and Amen, amen has to be combined. All the promises are yes. Yes, yes, not no, 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 